it's 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 a wonderful workshop. I mean, I'm glad I came here despite all the travel hazards and busy schedule. Yeah, and uh, thank and thanks to uh, the organizers and, and specifically the organizer who invited me. Uh, so I I oh my. So I talk about something which is uh, commercially very important to Microsoft and many other companies, and um, that is uh, related to uh, online matching of uh, audience with advertiser or ad slot with uh, advertisers. And uh, it's, a, it's a joint work with Nikhil Devanur. It's work which I've been doing for uh, like five, six years, this particular problem. Uh, so. In this problem, uh, from the very high level, so, um, so what are the main algorithmic issues there? So we have basically large number of advertisers, let's say order of five order of magnitude. And then we have every day large number of audience, and uh, they could be 10 order of magnitude, 10 billion a day. And then when you visit a web page, you're an audience, and then we have uh, various attributes about you, like uh, you could be 35 year mail from NYC who just purchased a camera at Amazon or something like that. And hence, your value is uh, varied from advertiser to advertisers. If you had just purchased a camera, then maybe uh, people who are selling accessories for cameras might be more interested in you. And then there are various models of these uh, audience arrivals. They are stochastic and online. Okay. So, How do you ask a 35 year old from New York? Uh, they are uh, machine learning techniques. We just guess their uh, attributes by their behavior, past behavior. It may not be 100% accurate, it, but it has some accuracy. It's not completely nonsense either. Based yeah. on their browsing history? The, the, based on their browsing history. Mm -hmm. They might have registered their correct date of birth with the Hotmail, for example. Some people do. <laughs> <laughs> You correlate with their hotmail. You read their hotmail and say this sounds. Like yeah, there, there are all kind of cookies there. They they might it might be uh, they might have cookie on eBay, for example. Uh, I mean, when uh, your browser has tons of cookies, which gets uh, subbed up when you are visiting online. And you've accessed all this information. Not all of this, some of it, but uh, that's not part of the talk. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay. You so, open the door. <laughs> yeah. So some. So some of the actually uh, fundamental algorithmic uh, uh, problems we have been studying for a long time are actually are very central for these applications. Uh, and in fact, the flow is in the reverse direction also. Some of these problems inspired new kinds of uh, algorithmic techniques. And I'll show you one of uh, a new kind of algorithmic technique in this talk. So this talk is just an example of one, one such application. So um, you can see another application which actually quantifiably saved hundreds of million dollars to Microsoft is uh, this, uh, this easy paper where, uh, which is a real application of algorithm in the fields, um, where we showed how to um, match advertisers with audience in a fast pace and, uh, and we were basically thinking of acquiring a company which will have costed uh, maybe close to a billion dollars and, and our algorithm was uh, basically beating uh, those other techniques which were not based on fundamentals. So we, we proved uh, that uh, this, this algorithm will have uh, uh, close to optimum performance. And when we test data it, and it, it did have uh, close to optimal performance. So let me come to the main uh, theory part of this talk. Uh, so I'm <coughs> going to the EC paper. So, Online matching has been studied uh, for uh, 20 years. Uh, so what is an online matching? It, it, it's, a, it's a very simple problem. There are boys waiting here. The girls comes. They, uh, and then these uh, possible likingness are disclosed. And then you match a girl with a boy. Once it's married, there's no divorce here, permanent fix. Uh, so keep coming. And then this is the, this is the problem. And the question is, how many uh, girls and boys, how many marriages can you do? That's the matching uh, problem, very uh, well studied problem. So if you did not know which girls will be appearing and how their preference would be, uh, you may not get the optimal solution. 
So for example, here in the online fashion, you get only two marriages, but in offline you can get three, and, and the performance we measure is basically the ratio. It's like two-thirds for this example. Uh, so this is just, just a little bit of background. You can show that uh, um, if you just match a girl with any available boy who, who, where there's a mutual interest, you get a factor half. You can get at least half of the marriages this way. And this is essentially the best possible algorithm. This is, uh, I'm just saving time. This is an example. Uh, this girl, you map uh, to this boy, and then this girl, she liked this boy too. Then you can't match. So you get only one, where the optimal could have been two. Okay. So this was a deterministic, you, and then the very nice paper by Carl Vajrani Vajrani showed that if you had some kind of a randomization, you can improve this factor to be the 63%, one minus one over E. And this is essentially the, the best possible uh, uh, algorithm for this problem. Okay. So then this problem was generalized in the multi-match. Let's say boys and girls can have multiple uh, matches. And uh, let's say you can have, each boy can have K marriages and each girl can have K marriages. Then um, the simple water level algorithm, that when a girl arrives, look at all the boys she is interested in and match her to that boy who is least married so far. And, and uh, that gives you, uh, again, 63% uh, and that's also optimal. Okay, so that was just history. Now what is an ad assignment problem? So here, who are the girls and the boys? So you can say advertisers are the offline party. They are there. They are saying we, have, uh, uh, we are here to buy audience. And uh, then the ad slots, the audience are appearing basically online. And um, these advertisers have budgets. They say, okay, we are uh, willing to spend only so much money. And when the ad slot arrives, they declare sort of um, how much they value these ad slots. Okay. And then the goal is to basically this match this, uh, this ad slots or audience with the advertisers to maximize uh, the revenue. So in, in this talk, Note that this is not a game theoretic setting. I will not be talking about any incentive. It's an optimization problem. So we are saying that uh, in this talk, uh, you pay your bet. If you think that uh, this audience is worth uh, so much, you, you just pay that money. Okay. So there is no game theory here I'm talking about. Uh, so our objective is, uh, as I said, is the, is the optimized revenue. And again, you can get 50% uh, of the optimal revenue by just greedily matching. When the audience comes, see which advertiser is willing to pay the most and just match it. That will give you 50% of the, of, the, of the thing. And this is the, essentially the best possible unless you make the following assumptions, which is uh, true in practice, that budgets are very, very, uh, exponent, I mean, a magnitude larger than bids. Uh, you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to see the model. And, uh, what, what's the algorithm? So the uh, <laughs> algorithm problem is matching the uh, audience, which is coming online with an advertiser, so as to maximize the revenue. <coughs> so it's a matching problem. Uh, audience comes. The advertiser says, uh, various advertisers say, oh, this <coughs> audience is worth two cents to me. Others say, this audience is worth penny to me. And somebody says, oh, it's a, it's a 10 cents worth to me. And then you have to match this uh, um, audience to one of the advertisers so as to maximize the revenue. And the constraint is you can't charge more money than the budget of an advertiser. Are you assuming the clicks are known? There's no click. <coughs> okay. okay, it's a it's a it's an assignment problem. Okay. So and under this model that budgets are magnitude larger than bits. And which is true because typically advertisers are looking for millions of audience. So if you are and they usually bid um, for expectedly but like less than a penny per uh, per audience, and they have uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, budget. So so this is the impact is true. Then in this problem, you can again get uh, basically 63% uh, uh, approximation factor. This is uh, 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 essentially the, this Mehta Sabiri Vajrani Vajrani paper, which which proved this 63%. And um, this is again the best possible number. Okay. So let me. So this is a, 
let me show you uh, how we prove it first and then we uh, build on, on top of that to make it. So how, how, you, how you get the 63%? Okay, here's a, a simple argument. So first write this problem as a uh, linear programming relaxation. So you have an uh, advertiser, which I'm denoting by I, and J is an audience, and then BIJ is the bit, or the value of this, uh, this uh, uh, audience to the advertisers. This capital BI is at the budget, and XIJ is my indicator variable, which is saying J is uh, given to I. So this is the maximization I'm going to do, maximize the revenue. I can assign uh, a ad slot only to the one advertiser, and then I can charge at most the budget, and then this is not negative constraint. And then you can uh, write its dual, um, and uh, I'm not going to go into detail. Um, so basically the, the algorithmic technique is the following. Uh, at a very high level, suppose you are shooting for factor F. Okay, you say I want at least 90% uh, performance, or you say I want at least 30% performance. Whatever performance you're shooting for, take that number F, okay? To prove that in the performance, to have a certificate of this performance guarantee, you will show a solution and it's, and it's dual which satisfy this uh, relation. Primal over performance you are shooting for equal to dual. If in the end, if I show you the certificate, that's a, that means I have achieved that uh, performance. Can you say what performance is? Performance is uh, the, uh, the online revenue you make divided by after you have seen everything, in hindsight you compute, oh, I could have made 20% uh, more. Oh, that's your one minus one over E. That's my one minus one over E. Why not just pin one minus one over E here? Why are you screwing around with other S? Oh, because uh, we may want to do better. I mean, now we are going to uh, move a little bit away from uh, pure theory. I, mean, I will show you that it, it's a flexible algorithm that you can shoot for better because maybe you know a little bit more about the problem or maybe while you are running the algorithm you are turning out to be lucky and you say, oh, I'm lucky today so let me notch up my performance factor. So one minus one over is the worst case pessimistic guarantee. And that's one of the criticism of online algorithm that uh, they give, I mean, nobody will take 37% uh, loss. Uh, uh, opportunity loss. Uh, but these people don't know that 37% is only the worst case. And, and that's a basically big criticism of a lot of uh, theory work, that uh, it gives you a performance number which is very different than uh, what you observe in practice. So you're gonna do binary search and find the best F you can get? No, the goal is to design a flexible algorithm where you can tune the F as your instance is turning out to be. You don't I mean, shoot for the worst case. Why is the best step to the best day? I don't get it. You, you, yeah, you're going to see this. You're gonna, you may even want to tune this online. That's not, that's yeah, during the runtime, dynamically you tune it. As you are running your algorithm in practice, uh, you tune this F. Uh, so you're trying to make F as big as possible. Huh? You want to make big, uh, F as big as possible, but if you set F equal to 99%, then the algorithm will go into contradiction somewhere. If you set F equal to 50%, it will not go in, uh, into contradiction. Uh, I mean, as long as you are setting it 63%, but that is like assuming the pessimistic view of the world. But if you assume that the, there is no adversary there sitting out which is sending out the bad audience, then you may be able to do with large F. You have to pick your F, you can't just. You, you got to pick your F and uh, you can, uh, and you can uh, dynamically change it. So that's the neat thing about this algorithm, that the algorithm depends upon the performance factor you are shooting for. In many problems, what happens is, you have an algorithm, you run that algorithm, and then you compute how its performance is. But here, performance you are shooting for is part of the algorithm. In real life, you had some idea, well, I typically can do, 90% and so I'll just... So I'll, I'll show you, yeah. So I'll, 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 this is this is just... Um, uh, yeah, okay. So this, since I have only 10 more minutes, I, I think I, I want to at least show you the slides which, which I want to... <laughs> so <laughs> initially, like you said, primal equal to dual equal to zero. So if nothing happened, your performance is whatever you want it to be. It's 100% or whatever you want to call zero by zero is anything. And then you just uh, make 
Delta prime all over F equal to delta dual all the time. Okay, as long as you can keep making this, uh, you are good. So um, let me skip all that stuff. So what happened that this equation, delta primal, the change over f equal to delta dual, gives you a differential equation. So this differential equation essentially captures your algorithm. And here you can play with the value of f. So if you know, uh, so if you know, let's say, a lot of stochastic information about f, so you can show that you can set f very close to 1. And if your stochastic information is turning out to be not as accurate as you were expecting, you can during the runtime start notching down f a little bit. So this is like comparison of uh, this technique with other techniques. So we had like primal dual technique, we had the greedy with dual fitting. So in the primal dual technique, the focus is always on theory. I want to prove in the end, I want to basically have a feasible dual. I want to give you a certificate in the end. In the greedy uh, technique, the focus is always on local optimization. We want to do as best as possible for this round, and uh, we will see what the factor turn out to be later on. In this technique, what I showed, it, is, it has actually combining best of these both two worlds. And the main thing I want to focus on for this workshop is here, like uh, which we have already discussed, the chosen approximation factor changes the algorithm. So it is the factor you choose and which, which changes the algorithm. Uh, so these were the points we have already discussed. So now let me go to the main part, the new part of this talk. Uh, so let's say the budgets, let's say you are, you are having an audience. So the following question people ask. If the advertiser has a value of 10 cents for this audience, Previous setting is, you can consider a stochastic setting. Uh, so let me start the talk now, okay? <laughs> so I have a, uh, so you, what I'm saying is, the notion I'm describing that that approach is a flexible approach. If you want to consider stochastic setting, um, let's say you, you know that most of the uh, people will spend at least 5% of their budget. You're very conservatively estimates. Every day I get so much audience, I'm sure I can consume 5% of my advertiser's budget. Then you can send F equal to instead of 63%, you can send X, I mean, I computed that about 66%. So you improve. Because you, you made this assumption that you will be able to consume 5% of everybody's budget because you are going to have so many uh, uh, audience. And then you can now, when you run your algorithm, you can set F equal to 66% and it will not go into a contradiction and you will have a 66% algorithm now. So the more information you could have, higher the value of f you can pick. Okay, so let me go to the, the main theory part, which I actually the most excited about, is the, let's say the budgets are, in, in, this, in this case, was hard budget. Uh, you have a value of audience 10 cents, and you have a million dollar, you spend million dollar, now another audience w w comes, you have, say, yeah, I still have a value of 10 cents for him, but sorry, I don't have any money. I say, how is about if I give you, let's say, for five cents this audience. Can you borrow from the next month? I mean, if you get a 50% discount, many people are sure. I mean, I can borrow money from the next month or from... So in practice, what I want to say that people have uh, uh, not this hard setting where after budget, they say, I'm, I'm done. This is happening because these are the tools we provide. You, it, it's may, may possible that then they can borrow money from other people and then this cost is the borrowing cost and hence they can still go beyond their, this B number and then they keep uh, purchasing the ad but they are willing to pay lower amount. Uh, so this slope is one, this slope is let's say some smaller slope S. Or in general, it could be some kind of a concave utility. This is com coming from that you have concave utility for money. If, I, if a business has twice more money, it doesn't mean that it has uh, twice more value. So this is a, basically you could have a concave utility that means that uh, as I'm giving you more and more ads, your uh, willingness to pay for an, an additional ad is decreasing uh, using some curve. So, so this is the problem I want to show. So this one we can actually get a little bit better than factor uh, one minus one over e. What is this? S is the slope of this line. 
So this is one and then this is S. Then you can uh, show that it, 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 it is a little better and this is again optimal. So let me go to the general case. So here the general case is this curve, let's say it's represented by F. F of U is your utility you get of all the advertisements and F is your willingness to pay for this utility. Okay. And I'm assuming F is a non-decreasing concave smooth all that nice property, concave function. So F0 is zero. So in, if you didn't get anything, you don't pay nothing. It's derivative, function is denoted by G. And G is positive, since F is increasing, but it's a decreasing function, okay? So F is the, your willingness to pay, and G is its derivative, marginal willingness to pay, okay? So you can write this uh, program offline. Uh, you can, uh, as a convex program, and you can solve it offline if you wish. Uh, so to solve in an online fashion, we need to write a dual for this convex program. And uh, what are the op our options in, in theory? One option we typically do is take this, uh, uh, this smooth uh, uh, curve and, and do it piecewise linear function. But that, we say that that becomes too complicated and hides all the beauty which is coming from convex programming. Another approach is use KKT conditions. The problem with this approach is that the primal variables show up in the dual, which is uh, again not very useful and it can make the things complicated. So the another option is the following. Let's say you guess the, the optimum solution a priori. Let's say you can non-deterministically guess, okay, these are my point on everybody's curve. So note that I don't have just single curve. I have curve, one curve for each advertiser. You guess that, okay, for e this advertiser, I'm going to pay, you know, deliver this much value. For this advertiser, I'm going to go this much value. So you guess these functions. When you guess these numbers, you can write the hyperplane. Hyperplane, uh, I'm Why is that not the same as KKT? You, instead of trying it at all points, you're just writing it at, guessing it at some of the points. Yes, but what happens is that you, you will not have uh, primal variables in the dual. Sure. Okay, so, so it's not the same as KKD because KKD will give you primal variables into the dual program. You can eliminate those, but again it becomes complicated. We want a very simple notion of duality. Okay, so essentially you make a guess. You say that I'm going to just draw those hyperplanes. I will convert it into a linear program if I know this guess, and I take the linear programming dual. And in the linear programming dual, I know that there will not be any uh, primal variables. So you can do all that work, and then you get the following dual, which uh, doesn't have any primal variable. So u and x are the primal variable, and v and alpha are the dual variables. There is uh, there is no uh, nothing here. So then what you do is you follow the same approach. Um, so these are some of these properties. You again follow the same approach. You take f, and you say that you are shooting for some f, and and then you will set primal over f equal to dual. Now the question is, in, uh, what is the worst case f you can choose for a given concave function? Okay, so you can basically this is uh, this a lot of this. So you can represent this algorithm by this differential equation, and the worst case f is, what is the maximum f you can uh, choose, uh, which satisfies some boundary conditions? Let me do the boundary conditions. I can't explain this since I skipped that. Okay. So, so here's the worst case F possible. So you say that this is my algorithm, this differential equation. I solve this thing so that initially I am zero equal to zero. And uh, my derivative of this V as a function of U is only increasing. Okay. Again, I mean, I have to, sorry for the time and I have to skip that. Uh, I'm just giving you like a very high level picture. So you capture the algorithm by differential equation, and then you say that what is the worst case f possible, okay, for a given function f, okay. For a computer, actually, this is not very hard to compute. Uh, in fact, I, who doesn't know much software programming, wrote a program to compute this f within 10 minutes. It's a very simple first order differential equation, and, and you can compute this f in practice. You're giving, you know, f and g. Yes, G is given to you. G so is derivative of F. G is derivative of F, whatever. So the only thing you need to compute is this factor F. Yeah. 
which you can just compute by, by, by a small program. And uh, this is a theorem by Mark Breverman that this, this is satisfied. Maybe you can do better, but this is certainly sufficient. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me prove first uh, some special cases, then I, I show you how, what does the thing look like in general. Let's say your utility fun uh, your willingness to pay is the u to the power delta. The amount of ads you get t to the power delta. Let's say square root u. Then uh, you can solve this, that differential equation to, to delta power delta. But in most of the cases, you can't solve that differential equation in closed form. So what do you do then? I mean, tactically, as I told you, you can just run it on a computer program. But theoretically, what do you do? I mean, how good my algorithm is? Okay. So here is the new technique we have uh, for the, to, to settle this point. I will say that this, whatever this factor f is, this is its hardness also. This is the best possible algorithm you can get. And how do I do that? I write a uh, counterexample uh, to, uh, to this problem, not counterexample, the tightest example to this problem. And I say that this tight example and this uh, algorithm I gave you are primal dual pairs. Okay. So in general, the complexity theory is a dual to algorithmic theory, but it only satisfies the weak duality. We always ask the question for every problem, does it satisfy strong duality in the sense that does the lower bound and upper bound match? Okay, for this problem, we can capture both the upper bound and the lower bound by mathematical programs and we show that they, they satisfy strong duality. Okay, so let me capture the worst case example by, uh, by similar differential equation. So this is the worst case examples given by Karp, Vazirani, Vazirani for their problem. And uh, it's a very, and you can argue that the worst case example will be symmetric. So a girl comes, likes all the boy, whoever boys you map up to, adversely bring other girls where this boy is excluded. Okay? So essentially that means the first girl should have equal probability in case of your maintaining to, to map the, all the boys because otherwise the adversary can only make it worse for you. Okay? So this is, this is the, the tightest example, worst example for uh, their problem. What is the first example for us? It looks like it is again the same symmetric situation. I'm parameterizing my instance continuously from zero to one. That means for every x there is a boy. I have infinite number of boys here. For every x there is a girl also. And how many girls of one kind are arriving? So the girl of zero kinds are arri arriving v zero in number. Girls of let's say so it's a continuously this mapping. Girls of point three are arriving. So this is the weight, the number of girls of uh, of this kind arriving. So what does girl v zero point three means? She likes the boy 0.3 or higher. That's her uh, uh, basically uh, quality factor. Okay. Then you can compute the uh, approximation factor of any algorithm. Not only this, the, the, this information theoretically, this is the, uh, you can write this, the, the factor, the hardness factor of this example by this uh, basically mathematical expression. Okay. This is the mathematical expression. And then what you can show that the following two are equal. You take the infimum of uh, the worst case example and you take the supremum f which you can have chosen in your, uh, um, in your algorithmic differential equation and they are uh, they are the same number, okay? And how you do that, you basically take this thing, write its uh, derivative conditions, you prove a lot of properties about it. I mean, you basically the tools we use are variational calculus and function analysis, then take its derivative and, and reinterpret it, uh, choose the, your mapping of this derivative to UNV until you get the same differential equation, okay? So the corollary one is, uh, basically you can compute the optimal f, so whatever f you are computing for this is, is actually optimal. Uh, and this second corollary, this factor, this f is at least one minus one over e, so you don't have to depend upon uh, this Mark Reverman complicated proof, which I never understood, and I think he can't repeat it either. 
uh, that proof, and and you don't have to depend upon it. So uh, that, that corollary too for every f that is that precondition now f, right? Pardon? The hypothesis of corollary two. For every year. For every year, for every year, every payment function, yes. It, it, this much, it, as long as uh, okay. for concave uh, function and G is a decreasing function, this is, yeah, this is true. So the, in fact, the linear case, the hard budget case is the worst the case possible. Is, the, the continuous? Um, no, because the set of continuous function is dense, so, so you can, uh, with tiny approximation, if it's a discontinuous, you can, with tiny approximation, you can make it uh, continuous. Okay, so why it worked? The work, it worked uh, this analysis because it's independent of the graph. Yeah, okay, well, this, is, this is the second last, just to say it. Because it, the analysis is independent of the graph. So, so what, what the algorithm actually does is whatever you do on the worst case example, <laughs> okay? And um, I've already said this, so, yeah, these are uh, some of the open problems which uh, we can, of course, talk offline. So I should conclude my talk. Um, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say that uh, I feel bad getting off because for well, several years, Kamala has generated fantastic technology for dealing with online problems in the framework of technology. And what you're hearing is sort of you know, several layers of nuanced development of this work. So I'd love to hear more about this. Uh, uh, Pushing her during 30 minutes, which is hard. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Are there any questions? <laughs> so, again, I did not understand the whole thing because we went too fast and I'm not aware of your work. Yeah, I, I just wanted to give the, the bigger picture that, um, yeah, the, 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 the high level question. So, it looks like the approach you're taking is more like a greedy approach where you may resort to cherry picking depending on what the advertiser is using, bidding for in the short term. So, let's say there are two advertisers, one is asking for mails. So it is computing a uh, trade-off function between budget and bids. That's right. Uh, right. Automatically, but, and that's captured by the differential equation. But that's more short term, right? So in the long run, what may happen is, let's say there are two advertisers. The first one is asking for mails from California, let's say. Oh, no, no, that's not short term. Because the, what happens is, if you don't choose the parameters of differential equation correctly, then it will not satisfy the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions, um, there are some boundary conditions, which um, uh, I didn't mention properly, but let's say in the, in the cases, the budget should not be over uh, shoot. So that's a boundary. Right. So, so, so differential equation is capturing what happens in this absolute time unit. But overall, the when you find the best f, it will take the entire curve into account. So my question.